it is just problem after problem, isn't it? Okay, so the next one is that these little blocks that I have to hold the rods, obviously when I printed them first time with ABS or whatever it was, there was plenty of over extrusion. So the rods just kind of held in there without sliding at all. Now I put in this little cable tie thinking it might do something, but really I never had much hope. So obviously I didn't need them before and now I do need them and they're not gonna work. They're just, they're, they just don't really help grip in that direction. So from day one, I had a design that had uh, a kind of plate across the back here with a kind of little thing that pokes in the end and that stops this whole rod sliding back and forwards. So I obviously need to print those. So I'm gonna get on and do that, get them on the printer so we can get on with doing the extruder and Z axis first. And then we'll just have to add in this lot when that print has finished. I think it's gonna be, yeah, it's the same for both sides. So definitely need a full set of those anti forward and backwards movie bits. Right, let's go get a print started. Let's work on some stuff in the meantime. Obviously to fit those, which I'm printing, I'm gonna to have to remove these four parts. So might as well do that at some point, which also means I then have to remove the LCD again. So we like two steps forward, one step back, or whatever the saying is. So we might as well get on and do that. Just dismantle this so we're ready to put those on. When those are done, we can put them on. In the meantime, after doing that, we can put in the new lead screws and mount the whole um, X axis. So Z and X axis, and then we'll do the Y and LCD after that. Let's get on with it then, shall we? So I've just had to solve another little problem. These lead screws are very slightly too long for my setup. And these new Z tops don't have a hole in this place normally. So the lead screw was hitting the top of the plastic before it was before this aligned with the holes. So I just drilled a little hole and used a deburring tool to basically take out the entire center. I think it's turned out really quite nice actually. They feel Fairly nice. I'll probably print some like proper ones with the holes already in them at some point, just because they'll look like properly smooth. But these are definitely good enough for me. So now I just need to assemble these to the frame with the Z rods. <laughs> So I've got the extruder on and the z-axis and it's all gone together absolutely perfectly. Not. So <laughs> one of the problems we've got here is that in order for the carrier to come all the way across here I have to remove the bolts down here or screws whatever you want to call them and the problem with that is that that's what attaches this side to this side well this side to the back side rather. So we can't not have them. So what I found is some low profile head screws. So these are only one and a half mil thick heads, which is good for what we need. However, the only ones I have, well, I only have two of them that are too long and I have like 10 that are too short. So yeah, they're too short. So what we need to do, I mean, I got those from Usnest. You can probably get them from somewhere else. So I need to get some low head socket profile screws that are M5 by 20. Uh, so that will replace that lot. So then the frame's gonna look a bit weird if we've got some of one type of screw and some of another type of screw. So I'm tempted to remove all the screws. No, that seems a lot of work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, well, I'm just gonna do the six down here. Uh, yeah, six that are in the way. Those are gonna be low profile and so the whole carriage can move just fine. In terms of the cable management on the back, which I was also worried about, that seems to be all right as long as, well, as long as we get rid of these screws. 
So it can move all the way to this side and it hits the end stop here. It can move all the way to this side and then it hits the screw. So once we've got the screw out of the way, I think we're gonna be all right. Just, yeah, gotta get some of these in. Right, so I've got some of those screws on the way. For now, we'll just stick those back in that box because they're no good, because they're too long, and we'll just carry on with what we've got. There does seem to be a bit of an ongoing theme here, doesn't there? Goes wrong, carry on anyway. Goes wrong, carry on anyway. Goes wrong, carry on anyway. Anyway, let's carry on. Excellent. <laughs> oh dear. So those bits that go opposite these to hold the rods in are now finished. They've just finished a couple of seconds ago. However, that bed is now at 85 degrees Celsius, so I'm not gonna be able to touch it for a bit. And it's PEI printed onto PETG. Well, no, the other way around. So it's gonna be very difficult to take off until it's cooled down. So we might as well get on with doing something else. So I'm gonna start by putting this power supply back onto the frame and start routing a couple of cables, I think because we're pretty much there for a lot of it. Uh, once we've got that all together, we'll get the, uh, the bed and that doohickey stuff on. Once we've got the bed on, time to do finish the cable management, get the cables to the right length, do all the kind of crimping and ends to make sure they all connect up properly. And then I think we're good to go. So me little bits have printed, uh, so hopefully with that on there and that on there, that should produce a nice kind of compression onto that steel beam, steel rod, whatever you want to call it, that will result in a really good grip. So I'm going to get on with assembling that with my fingers crossed that it works as I hope it will because I've obviously, well not necessarily obviously, but I've never tested it before so you know. Fingers crossed. What's the worst that could happen, eh? Just have to start again. So I've got the bed assembly on now. Yes, I'm using zip ties. Deal with it. <laughs> I'd rather I didn't use zip ties, but it's what I've got. Uh, I did want to buy some U-bolts. I thought I had, because like that was part of the upgrade that I wanted to do, but it turns out I hadn't. I also hadn't printed any parts to mount anything on, so this is what we've got. However, it might not be perfect, but it does, it does work. And it's also a bit quieter than bearings, especially over time. It might not be as low friction, but that doesn't really matter. Bed to go on, and then I'm gonna start plugging stuff into the control board. Oh, I'm missing some screws here. Should put those in. Uh, once we've got stuff plugged into the control board, I can start to test, see if everything's actually working as it's supposed to. I mean, it's not exactly an original printer, so you've gotta be a bit careful with what's going where. But I think everything should be pretty much ready to go. Most of the parts are in. Uh, I think this and these Oh, this was supposed to go on there. So that's the filament sensor top cap thing that needs to go on. And then this is the uh, mount for the control board, which is sort of based on the original, but also custom so I can fit it on this side in the exact specific way with the whole pattern that I need like that. And we also don't have like a door cover because it goes on. I mean, you can't really see that way. It goes on this way with the kind of solid face. Well, it's got holes in it, but the solid face facing outwards. So there's no real way to get to the inside anyway, so you don't really need a cover. Plus, with the whole frame in the way, you can't open the cover anyway. So, yes. This way, all you have to do is plug everything into the control board, tilt it up, and then screw it in. I mean, maybe it's not the best way, but that's the way that it works. 
and it's good enough. So it's what I'm going with. Right, so let's go on with getting the heated bed onto that platform. That's gonna be super nice. And then start plugging things in. Getting exciting. <laughs> So in typical fashion for this project, we have a problem. The problem is me. So <laughs> basically what I've done is I just realized as I was putting on the heat bed that the holes didn't quite line up. So the on the Mark III, it's a grid of nine holes. And I don't think there's a right and wrong way. It just can go either way. However, on the Mark IIS version, there's the outside four and the center two, a bit like with the Mark IIS. On the Mark II S, the middle two, I don't think actually mounted, supported, or anything. Anyway, there's a specific orientation that it needs to go. And of the two orientations that I could have chosen, I obviously chose the wrong one. So now we have to take the whole heat bed off again, keep the bed support, the bed, uh, the carriage thingy the same, but change everything else around. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got everything really coming together now. Bed is on, finally. Screws just right, that uh, kind of system I've done with the brass kind of hex studs and the screws up through the bottom. Seems to have worked really well. Didn't really have any problems installing it, so that's all great. Well, apart from the fact that I did the bed the wrong way around first time. Everything after that went smoothly for a change. Other than that, I've just put the uh, cables into a corrugated tube thing at the moment. I'm not going to leave it like that. It's just a better way to keep everything together while I'm uh, kind of testing things, if you like. So that will stay like that for a little bit while I make sure that everything's working as it's supposed to or check that things are not working in the way I intend. Uh, and then all the cable lengths I've now got to sort out. So I'm going to get this box populated with the control board, which is sitting back there, and then try and get some resemblance of correct cable length so I'll just kind of plug stuff in mount it in the electronics put it up just to check it works at that length and then we'll just cut the end do the connectors doobly doobly do jobs are good so I mean a lot of it should be fairly the right length already uh, the seven motors I think I cut to the right length based on the previous ones assuming I cut the previous ones the right length that is they might not be so that's why it's worth double checking now and some things like this sensor, for example, at the time when I did this, I didn't have the right things to change these connectors. So I set them at the length that they were, and then that was it. So this length here is probably like way too long. It doesn't need to be anything like that long for that end stop, which doesn't go further than like there. So, you know, just things like that. Getting the cable lengths right will make it nice and tidy build at the end. So populate this, sort of cable lengths, test them in there. That'll be what's next. So that's it from me today on the Mark IIS upgrade build. For now, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. There'll be a link in the description. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that. And I will see you in the next one.